Hey guys, Furum here, and today I'm going to be testing my Lamborghini Cyan in multiplayer in Asphalt 9. Now, I only managed to get this car at one star, which I think a lot of people probably did, so this is going to be at a rank that most people have it at, so you'll be able to see how it might perform in multiplayer. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already, and enjoy this video. So, these races were recorded in the classic season that came right after the most recent update to Asphalt 9, not in the current Slipstream one that's going on. And I found that this car at one star is not nearly as good as it is at max. If you would like to see me test this car at golden max, I do have a video up about that on my channel as well from a max free try season a while back. But although I generally did okay in multiplayer in this car, it definitely was not great and I probably wouldn't use it much again. At this rank, it goes 234 miles per hour, but that is only when you have perfect nitro going. Otherwise, it goes about 228, I believe, which is no faster than some high-end A-class cars, and even some high-end B-class cars can go faster than this thing. And what's more is that this car is not crazy agile either at one star. I mean, it's pretty good. It's more agile at max, but even at stock, it has a pretty long nitro efficiency, which is one of its biggest strengths, I believe. Its acceleration, drifting, handling are all fine, I guess. But overall, I would say after driving this car that it really just was not worth it. I spent probably several thousand tokens on it, and I got a car that I'm probably never going to use again unless they make it a necessary requirement in some other special event. But even then, they would most likely require you to have it at higher stars to get many blueprints for whatever car it was. Like, you know, a lot of the recent special events have had two, three, four, five star requirements for cars to get blueprints, like in the Bailey special event. And speaking of the Bailey, I have some bad news about that. You guys may remember in the past week or so, I've been thinking about whether or not I'm going to go for the Bailey. Well, I've decided that I am not going to. And let me explain why. It would cost me several thousand tokens to unlock it, just like for the Scion, because it's basically the same kind of event as that one. Except that we get the Stingray as a free try, whereas we did not get the Gardo as a free try in the Bailey event, which I would definitely say is an improvement in the Bailey event, but I'm still a little salty that I did not get to play the final round in the Scion event because of that, because that's a car I did get, whereas I'm not going for the Bailey, because not only will it cost several thousand tokens in order to unlock, just unlocking it will most likely not be enough to win the Tuatara. Did I pronounce that right this time? Because I have been told that you will need a four-star Bailey in order to unlock the Tuatara, which I think is absolutely ridiculous considering how many tokens you would have to spend in order to four-star the Bailey, and there's no way that only that would be enough enough to unlock the Tuatara either. There'd be more tokens you'd have to spend in that. So I'm afraid this is shaping up to be another terrible event like the Yesco, but we'll see when it comes out. But if that's true about needing the Bailey at four stars in order to get the Tuatara, I have no high hopes for this event. I do certainly hope I am proven wrong, but there's something to keep in mind even if that is the case. Based on the stock stats of the Tuatara, they look very similar to the stock stats of the Yesco, perhaps even slightly worse. So probably the Tuatara is going to be very similar to the Yesco in overall performance, and perhaps slightly worse even at the same stars. So honestly, I would not sweat it too much if you did get the Yesco, because that car is very likely to remain strong for a long time in the future, and even if the Tuatara may be ever so slightly better, considering the probably few number of people that are actually going to get it, if those predictions are true about the event, honestly, I would just try to get as many rewards as you can through the event, and just stick with the Yesco if you got that. Now, when the Tuatara event comes out whenever it is, I might make another video on it, if there is anything especially interesting or noteworthy about it, or if it turns out such that you can actually get it without four-starring the Bailey. But we'll just have to wait and see. I took the slightly worse route here. It is better to go left at the first bit so that you don't hit this wall when going into the finish line, but I still came in first, although it was very close. I will say, I came in first fewer times when driving this car than I did in pretty much any other S-Class car in the recent future. And I got beat by B and A-Class cars multiple times, 
so you can see why I'm not particularly impressed with this car at low stars, and why I probably would have been better off just not going for it. The reason why I went for it when I did was because I thought I was going to be able to get a good amount of tokens back from the final stage of the event, but then, you know the story, I didn't get to play it at all, so it was kind of a useless investment. But hey, I got a video out of it, so not all is bad. In this race, we're seeing some of the typical cars that I saw throughout my testing in this car, even in Legend League. Cars like the BC and the Huracan Evo. We also had an Aventador J in this race, which ended up doing very well. I think the reason that the Cyan has done so relatively poorly, I suppose, compared to a lot of the other cars that I've tested, is because it just doesn't have any particularly standout feature, and it has a detrimental feature to it, which is the fact that you have to be in perfect nitro to get your top speed, which sucks down your nitro more than if you could just go in single nitro with it. And therefore, the brake nitro trick doesn't allow you to stay at your maximum speed because it only keeps you up to your yellow nitro speed, which is a good six miles per hour slower than your perfect nitro speed. So that's another blow to this car's already relatively mediocre performance. If this car ever comes around again, I really wouldn't recommend that people go for it. I know it's set near the top of Class S, but it really shouldn't be. I mean, even at max, it is nowhere close to being competitive to the likes of the Tri-Nemesis or the Shiren or the Yesco, simply because of the gigantic speed gap. Now, I can imagine it being better than, say, the Regera or the Fenner in multiplayer because it is a lot more agile at max than those cars, and so probably a bit more reliable but not compared to the Tryon or the Shiren or cars like that, most likely. But I can't imagine people are going to try to max out this car anytime soon, or probably even be able to, so I can't really see a lot of tests being done to see where it really fits in there. Now, a lot of people have asked me to do another best and worst cars in each class list, and I will probably try to make one of those after the next update, I would say. I don't want to do one every update for a few reasons. First of all, not much changes in between updates overall, on the list, they take a long time to make, and if I did too many, they would really start to clutter up the channel. So I will continue to make one every four updates or so, and since there have been a couple of nerfs and buffs since the previous one, that's something to take into account too. So we came in second in this race, losing to a Huracan, but we did beat a VLF, a Huera, and a Corvette Grand Sport, all of which are cars that we see in this race as well. We're now into the final, final round of the 4GT Mark II Grand Prix, and I should end up at fourth position position in it, if I've calculated correctly, possibly fifth, but most likely fourth, so I won't be getting a decal for that car because the top three players have gotten better times than me in like almost every single one so far. But I don't really care about that because I'll be getting the car with one star. I think most people realize this one was just not worth upgrading because it's very low in its class. There's not really any place where it's going to be useful. So I only saw like less than half the people, even in my tier one group, actually started up to more than one star. I saw a few two-star ones, but I don't even think I saw any three-star and beyond ones. So you can expect a video about that sometime after I get it. I might wait a little bit to see if there is a season specifically for it, or I might just go ahead and use it in the multiplayer season, the slipstream one that's going on. However, that car is not really one that is very good for slipstream, and since it's at the bottom of its class, I can't imagine it will do very well, because it will be facing against a bunch of cars like the Huracan and the Corvettes when I'm in this 196 mile per hour car, so I might just try to do something in its own season. Now, if you pause at the beginning of a multiplayer race, your car just kind of doesn't go very much. It doesn't just continue going in a straight line at normal speed like it does in Asphalt 8. I learned that the hard way after a few times, so yeah, don't do that. In this final race, we are facing two Corvettes, three Huracans, as well as two Yescos. It's been very rare that I've seen more than one of those cars in one race, although I'm sure it happens more often after the Grand Prix. So now it is time for my general review about this car. It is situated pretty high in Class S, but at the stars most people are going to be getting at, it's more comparable to the lower end S class cars. While at one star, it does have pretty good nitro efficiency and decent handling and drifting as well. Its acceleration is not 
all that great at 75, and its top speed, which at 234 is already not particularly great for an S-Class car, is brought down even more by the fact that you can only get that through perfect nitro, and when you are in other nitros, you will be going even slower. So this car is one that is really not worth it to go for, in my opinion. You might try it out in multiplayer for yourself, but you'll probably find that you won't win many races with it. At max, it is quite a bit better, but it still can't hold a candle to the likes of the Sheeran, the Rimac, and the Yesco. Except in rare occurrences like this one, where although we lost to one Yesco, we did beat the other one somehow, although the Huracans did too. Thank you all for watching, please like the video if you have enjoyed, and consider subscribing for more Asphalt and other games content, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye!